Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I'll be serving as your host for our short session today. Our facilitator uh, is Oscar Roche, uh, who has a manufacturing background, having worked in operations management with uh, diverse organizations, uh, really inside and outside of Australia. So this is truly a global affair today as Oscar is in Australia, myself, I'm in the United States, and I know the majority of our um, participants in today's webinar are located uh, in and around Europe. So I think we have the globe cornered, Oscar. Um, Oscar has been uh, uh, a TWI Institute instructor for several years and is really on the leading edge of today's topic. This topic of the intersection of TWI and CADA practice routines. Um, due to the short duration of our session today, we may or may not have time for questions. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to submit them using the GoToWebinar toolbar on your screen. And if we have time, we will field those. If we do not have time, we'll make his contact information available, and you can certainly communicate with Oscar directly through that. Also, side note, uh, we are recording this session, so if you would like to share this with others in your organization, certainly feel free to do that. So for now, though, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Oscar. Oscar, it's all yours. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to deliver this. As you said, all over the world, it's quite unique to be sitting here at 9 o'clock at night in Australia in a uh, small country town, which is where we're based and thinking this is um, going to all corners of the globe. So the mind is a patent-seeking mechanism. In 2007, Dr. Gwen Goldsworth said that to me, and it had some impact, but not a lot. But as time has gone on, and I've got a little older and a little more experienced, I've seen this time and time and time again, um, both in, ch in uh, children's child development and in adult development, uh, and building of capability. And the, what we're going to discuss today, or this evening, today for most of you, is no exception to that. There are four patterns that provide tremendous value um, that you can get yourselves or through your leaders in an organisation that uh, we're going to discuss. These four patterns all have the same base pattern, uh, meaning they're easier to embed. There's one overarching one, but all are interlinked. So let's just have a look at these four patterns or four human behaviours of high value in the workplace that we're going to discuss. The first one is results through people. The first one is results through people. <clears throat> the second one is the pattern or the behaviour of instructing in particular instructing in standard work in order to create standardised work. The third behaviour is that of Kaizen, short or rapid incremental improvement. And the fourth human behaviour, again I underline that word behaviour, is the behaviours required, the pattern required for moving forward. And I think we can safely say that if we are moving forward, we are improving. So it's really the pattern of improving. Each of these patterns are developed via carters, can be developed via carters. There's a carter for developing each of these patterns. You'll be familiar, I obviously don't know any of your backgrounds in terms of TWI or in terms of the improvement carter. Um, so I'm going to make some assumptions that you do know some, you do you have some uh, experience in TWI. But before we get into some detail there, let's just confirm what a carter is. We've got this example here, probably the best known example whenever a carters are discussed these days, and that's <clears throat> from the movie Karate Kid and the carter of wax on, wax off. So what is a carter? A carter is a pattern of doing. It's a pattern of doing. It's a pattern of doing that develops 
a habit. It's a pattern of doing that develops a habit. Now, of course, as all of you know who have children and even dealing with adults, we not only have good habits, we can have bad habits, but they all develop through patterns of doing. So let's determine just quickly or define what a habit is. So a habit is an acquired behaviour. An acquired behaviour <coughs> that has become normal. An acquired behaviour that has become normal. So a kata is a pattern of doing that develops a habit. A habit is an acquired behaviour that has become normal. So what we want to do, these four patterns here, we want to develop them into behaviour that has become normal through the use of kata, kata patterns. In all four cases that we've got circled up the top there, we need to re realise that the katas we're developing here are patterns of the mind. They're not physical patterns. In Karate Kid, down the bottom left there, that we were talking about a physical pattern of the hand movement. In this, we're talking about a pattern, patterns of the mind, patterns of thinking. The first one, the way you get results through people is TWI job relations. Just quickly, for those, hopefully most of you have had some exposure, done some training, the principle of job relations. We have a leader, we have results, we have people in the middle of those results, we have a JR line that goes both ways between the leader and their people. Keep that JR line short and straight. Uh, oops, sorry, I misspelled people there. Um, pardon the Australian. Uh, keep that line short and straight and our results are far likely to be better than if it's long and wobbly and shaky. We do that through the application of job relations. The principle of job relations really is covered, I guess, in the card there, but I'll just draw it over here. We have our objective, which really sits around the whole of JR the whole of the four-step method. Then in step one, we get some facts. Step two, we decide. Step three, we do. And step four, we check. Covered off over there. <clears throat> when we're driving change and when we're moving forward through change as we do with the improvement carter, the, I guess what we, where we have used a lot, used JR a lot, is in sizing up, sizing up situations. In other words, understanding that a change is coming, and using JR to size up a potential wobble of this line over here and that JR line, and what we can do about it. When we do that, what we tend to find, we set our objective in terms of implementing the change, and the, the, uh, the, when we're considering, when we're doing our weighing, weighing and deciding <clears throat> with sizing up this problem, we tend to find that our solutions, our potential actions, are driven by the foundations above. Our potential actions are driven by these foundations. So I see a lot of and practice a lot of proactive use of JR, what I call proactive use, sizing up where my objective is associated with the driving of the change. And um, when we're considering doing that, we should be, of course, telling people in advance about a change that will affect them and telling them why. We should be figure out in, figuring out what we expect of people. We, I've got a great opportunity to either give credit when due. And who knows what best use we can make of different people's ability when driving change as opposed to doing normal standard work. So this is the first uh, a carter, if you like. JR is a carter. Here's the carter around there. JR is the is a carter that's going to uh, drive the development of a behaviour in one's mind, which will help link and drive uh, improvement in an organisation. 
the second one, probably the best known pattern, if you like, mind the pattern of the mind driven by uh, TWI is the way you instruct, the way you teach standard work being job instruction. Quite often in organisations I hear, we need standard work. Or I hear, we need to train people. <clears throat> I usually challenge that, nearly always challenge that and say you don't need standard work, you don't need to train people. What you actually need, those two above are just part of the big picture. What you need is standardised work. Standardised work. What you need is standardised work. Standardised work not being the pile of paper on someone's desk which is standard work or the procedures, whatever they may be. We need standardised work which is everyone on the factory floor doing it the best way. We know how today. <clears throat> this will be an important pattern that's required an important way of thinking in uh, the application of the improvement carter and the, co in, uh, the improvement carter because because we'll either be changing standardised work to dr through improvement or we'll be standardising it as part of the improvement process. So either way, JI is a very very important part of the whole uh, endeavours of driving improvement. And please, one of the things that that uh, I find people tend to see the JI pattern as just those four steps down there. Not the case. The JI pattern is just as much, just as important, and starts on the get ready side. The JI pattern. Number one, make a plan. Number two, set your recipe. Determine your recipe. The JIB is your recipe. <clears throat> now. Doing is really down there, isn't it? Get everything ready, arrange the work site, prepare the worker, present the operation, try out performance. That's the doing. And then at the bottom there we've got four follow up. Now I said at the start 10 or 15 minutes ago that this was these four habits or four behaviours have a common base and that is PDCA. On the previous slide, JR, we could see PDCA there. PDCA is here. On the JI side, we can see PDCA happening down here. <clears throat> the common base. The third behaviour, the third habit we want to try and develop in our leaders' minds is the way we do KZN. That being job methods. In the TWI world, we bring in job methods. The key to job methods list every detail, question every detail. The key tenant of this, key part of it if you like, is the, five, is the six questions there. Why is it necessary? What is its purpose? What we often find through that is it, it's not necessary or there is no purpose, we can eliminate it. But once it's proved its worth through those two questions, then where should it be done? When should it be done? Who's the best qualified to do it? And how is the best way? We don't start down here which is so often the case, without questioning the one above. So JM being the fourth, uh, the third pattern of behaviour that we want, a third pattern of way of thinking we want to embed and we need to embed as part of the whole. The fourth pattern developed through Carter is that, is that of the coaching Carter and where this fits in within the improvement Carter, let's quickly detail that. The improvement carter. So in the improvement carter, first thing we do is we set a challenge. The second thing we do is we understand the current condition 
and we understand that just enough, no more, just enough to set our first target condition. Any understanding more than that is waste. So we understand the current condition just enough to set our first target condition. Each of those crosses is an obstacle. <clears throat> we then P, D, C, A towards the target condition by removing each of these obstacles. The question becomes, how do we PDCA? The answer is we use the coaching card, the pattern of the coaching card, the behaviour that we want, the, the, be, the questioning behaviour that we want. The questioning behaviour that we want whenever we're driving improvement through the improved, uh, in step four of the improvement card, I mean PDCA. Briefly, let's go through that. So the, what's the target condition? This is the questioning behaviour, the carter, the pattern. What's the target condition? What's the actual condition now? We reflect another, and the key part here is we ask, what did we learn? Then we consider our obstacles and we pick one obstacle. Based on what we've learned and that one obstacle, we then determine our next step and we ask the key question, when can we see what we've learned from this? From this? So there's the carter, there's the pattern, if you like. That's the behavioural, the, the pattern of thinking we want to embed in the leader's mind of how to drive PDCA. What's the target condition? What's our condition now? What have we just learned? Okay, what obstacles do we need to address next? Given that, what's our next step and when can we see what we've learned? By, adopt the, by adopting that questioning pattern actually makes this wheel, if you want to think of it that way, spin. Making that turn, making this wheel turn, drives us forward. So this is the way we move forward towards our target condition. We move forward towards our target condition through that pattern. With thanks to Bill Costantino, uh, I just want to add a picture in here that can describe this a little further. I'll just make that a little bigger. <clears throat> different way of representing the same thing, might see, see it help to visually see it two different ways. Current condition is here with the eye, right there. Our target condition we've got on the right hand side, just here. How do we PDCA through? We get to that first obstacle, which is this one right there, and then we apply the same set of questions, the same pattern of thinking. What's our target condition? What's the actual condition now? By doing that, we remove that obstacle. Then we get to this one, remove that. So the questioning pattern, the, the way of moving forward, takes us through that dark green channel and eventually gets us through our target condition. We do that by the application of the improvement carter. So they're the four patterns of behaviour. Now, let's have a look at the way they fit together. <clears throat> this diagram is the improvement carter as a whole, represented slightly differently. As this same concept as the same page, the improvement carter as the previous page, represented slightly differently. There's the challenge, there's the current condition, there's our next target condition, here's where we remove obstacles. <clears throat> now what I'd like to pose to you is this, is when you're working in an environment as we're doing here, when we're working in this environment, our success, I believe, and my ex experience where I've practiced this and got others to practice it, has shown a significant difference, is we need to practice that environment with the support of the Job Relations Foundations. In other words, almost blanket that environment, coax that environment with the Job Relations <coughs> Foundations. Imagine how important when you're driving improvement in this way, uh, whether you're using improvement cut or it doesn't really matter any way you're driving improvement. Imagine the importance of telling people in advance about changes that will affect them and telling them why it's, uh, and tell them why tell them in advance. Wouldn't that be an important thing for you to do when you're driving improvement? 
And then what about letting each worker know how he or she is doing? Particularly figure out what you expect of the person. I see that so often, not only in driving improvement but in just day-to-day -day work where the people who are on the receiving end don't truly understand what's expected of them. And then when they don't do what's expected, uh, people wonder why. So let them imagine through, this, through the application of the foundations, we've told people in advance, we've let each other know. And through that we give credit when due and who knows, right at the top, perhaps through driving improvement we might be able to make best use of someone's ability. So my experience with the foundations when applied um, strengthened, very much strengthened the improvement Carter environment. And way they fit together. The first job relations fits in there as I've circled. The second place where we continually see them fitting together is down here, number four, when we address obstacles. Obviously, all organisations are different, but by nature, but by nature, we don't see much variation in the type of problems by nature or obstacles that people are removing. We find that the obstacles tend to fall into three categories. One is people type obstacles results to people. One is productivity type obstacles, increasing cycle, sorry, decreasing cycle time for example. Stability of standardised work is a third. We find roughly 80-20 rule that 80% 80 of your obstacles can fit into one of those three categories. So therefore we need obstacle removing patterns. Now you can probably see where this is going. JR is our obstacle removing pattern there. JM Question every, uh, list every detail, uh, question every detail sits there. And JI for stability of standardised work. So I refer to these three as obstacle removing patterns. Obstacle removing patterns. So I refer to these three as obstacle removing patterns. Patterns that can help you remove obstacles Removing obstacles gets you closer to our next target condition. All right, we're drawing towards a close. I'd like to thank Patrick Grout for this slide. I don't, I'm not sure if he's tuned into this. If you are, Patrick, thank you. So at the summit in uh, San Antonio in May, the US TWI summit, Patrick presented a number of slides where these symbols or these these coloured templates, if you like, were listed on his slides and it made me think a lot about and actually triggered the, the topic for this, this webinar and triggered him and just helped me cement in my mind how closely linked these four carters, these patterns of behaviour are uh, with each other. So the first one, the way we move forward, I said that was the coaching carter. The coaching carter is the way we move forward being in step four of the improvement carter. Uh, the yellow one, the way to handle people, you've probably realised that's job relations, the way we handle people, job relations. The way we do Kzen is job methods. And the way we teach jobs is job instruction. As I said, on that, we showed in that previous slide, job relations has a strong feed, the foundations has a strong feed in with the coaching and improvement carters. And then through the coaching carters, we might draw on this tool of job relations, of this tool of job methods. Through the coaching carter, as per the previous slide, we draw on those obstacle removing patterns, as I like to call them. Well, what are we driving for with this? Uh, through the, the building of these patterns, the practicing of these carters and the building of these patterns, we want to follow me. We want patterns that through each carter come to represent normal leaders' behaviour. We want patterns that through each carter Oops, sorry, not a K. Each carter. Patterns that through each carter come to represent 
come to represent normal leader behaviours. Patterns that through each carter come to represent normal leader behaviours. <clears throat> we wanted to imagine if the, you yourself as a leader or leaders in your organisation had these four patterns well developed in their mind such that they almost were innate. My belief is if that was the, that is the case, if that was the case then you'd be flying through your improvement carter being one, two, three, four there. All right, we're very close to the end. Where can I learn more and when? A couple of ways you can do this. One is there's the TWI and the Carter Summit in Europe. That is in Hamburg on November uh, 29. 30 and December 1. Then we have similar event in the USA, TWI and Carter Summit, now combined for the first time, I believe, Dwayne. Uh, yes. And that is in San Diego. San Diego on February 20, 21 and 22, obviously 2017. The, if you want some more information, Sooner than that, the Duane will open for questions shortly, but please feel free, you can email me. My email address is oscar at vwaust dot com. If you do email me, I assure you I'll respond, even if it's in brief to start with, within one to two days. So Duane, that just about draws it to a close. Just a quick summary then. That the, I trust through this slide here in particular, the way they fit together, you can see the link between the four carters, the four behaviours, and that what we want is develop, ideally, develop patterns that through each carter come to represent normal leader's behaviour. They all slot together and they work in together and it's a case of one and one and one making much more than four. Thanks, Dwayne. Do you want to hand over now and uh, see if there's any questions? Yeah, so Oscar, it doesn't look like questions have come in, so thank you for sharing your email address. Yeah, perfect. No Leave problem. that up on the screen there. Um, so as you, uh, as you have questions, as you uh, kind of ponder on what you've heard and learned here, certainly feel free to contact Oscar. Um, so Oscar, thanks for uh, facilitating our short session here today. And Thanks for uh, really kind of leading the way as uh, the TWI community and the CADA community kind of explore these th this intersection of these disciplines. So uh, thanks for shedding some light on that. Um, and then as Oscar mentioned, uh, certainly feel free to join us at the uh, European TWI and CADA <coughs> Summit uh, taking place in Hamburg. Um, we'll send out a link. Uh, I've already sent one through the GoToWebinar toolbar but we'll also send a follow-up email with a link to that particular event. Um, and then also look for an email from me uh, here in the next 24 hours uh, with a link to the recording of this session. So the idea of recording these sessions is it's a great opportunity for you to share with your colleagues. Um, we know that a number of people will actually uh, schedule a lunch and learn and uh, uh, perhaps all gather in a conference or training room and I'll share this information as a team and be able to use that as a uh, discussion point. So, Oscar, thanks for, uh, for facilitating our session here and then facilitating some ongoing discussions which we know will take place. No problem. Thanks for the opportunity. So, yeah. Until then, uh, Oscar, I guess uh, we'll see you in Hamburg. And, you uh, will. Have a great, great day, morning, afternoon, night. Sleep. Whatever time zone you're in. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.